just kind of want to ask about Will Howard and, and the way he throws the ball a little bit. We've seen some, I guess they used to call it ducks. I don't know if they still call it ducks anymore. Well, what's that a product of? Is it mainly him not trusting everything he sees? You know, I, I think it's just getting comfortable. And, and because when he's in practice, you, you see the ball come out of his hand and you feel like you feel, feel comfortable with it. Um, I think he does throw a ball that's, that's easy to catch. I mean, I think our guys like catching the ball when he's, when he's throwing it as far as how it comes out. Obviously, uh, you know, it, we've been fortunate. We haven't been throwing into a bunch of wind here lately, so that's, uh, that's always good because um, you do need to – he needs to get a tighter spiral to cut through the wind if, if we do get in a wind game. And with the wide receivers, I think in, at times during the game it seemed like they took a step forward. Did, did you feel that way? And how much of that is just a result of developing more chemistry with Will rather than Scott? I think the, chem the chemistry part is, is big, but also Will's ability to just go from A to B to C. I mean, I think we had, I don't know, seven or eight guys, nine guys maybe uh, have receptions uh, this past week. Um, and that's one of the things we want to do is, is we want to keep everybody involved. We have no desire to have one guy have eight catches and nobody else have a catch. So, you know, the more he gets comfortable with, with going through his reads and, and, and getting the ball out of his hand, uh, the more guys will keep getting involved. And the last question, one of your surprise contributors this year has been DJ Render, mainly because he was playing defense this time mm -hmm. last year. How much do you anticipate yeah. counting on him the rest of the year? Well, I think we got to keep counting on him the entire year. Um, now, some games he may play more than others, um, but, but you know, he had big, big, big catch for us at TCU um, and, and has continued to come in and play a lot of snaps. And um, I can't guarantee him anything, but, but we need to keep him involved and ready to play at any time. Arnie? Um, yeah, I also had a question about DJ. Just how did it, uh, how did it come about that uh, – that you switched him back to receiver, and uh, had you seen him work at receiver in the past? Or, uh, well, yeah, yeah, we had. You know, when we first got here, he was he was kind of a little bit more of a receiver, and then the opportunity really to, to to fight for a position was there was a better opportunity on the on the defensive side, and then as our kind of fall camp was unfolding, and then all of a sudden we get into the season. The opportunity to, to have an opportunity to contribute really was on the offensive side. So so then we moved him back over. And what uh what are his I guess what are his greatest attributes? What do you feel like he he gives you? His biggest, his biggest attribute his biggest attribute by far is that he's all in. He 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 just wants to have opportunity to, to contribute. And it doesn't matter to him if it's on the offensive, defensive side or special teams. He's 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 all about trying to help the Wildcats win. Fitz. Hey, uh, Coach, what, what progress did you see from that offense in the second half of the KU game? Well, it was, it was um, I don't know the exact stats, but we probably had more than half of our total offense just in the third quarter. And it, it came back to putting ourselves in manageable situations. You know, I think we, you know, we probably had you know, 14 first down opportunities in that in that third quarter. And it was guys making plays, not shooting yourself in the foot, not having a false start or, or a holding or those types of things. And you know, I don't know what our completion percentage was, but I felt like we threw it really, really well. We stayed on blocks and guys didn't get tackled one on one. And, and when you can do those three things, you have a chance to be successful on the offense. Are you seeing progress with Will? Reading defenses, going through progressions, those type of things. Uh, both uh, the ability to to read defenses, but also the ability to really feel comfortable in his protections, knowing where his problems may be, knowing uh, um, I I have the old line going in one direction, so I, uh, that defensive player, if he blitzes, um, I'm quote hot. His understanding of those things makes him much more comfortable in the in the in the pocket, and he's done a good job with that. Thank you. Jackson. Yeah, Coach, obviously each week in the Big 12, the defenses that you face prevent, present a lot of different challenges. I was just curious uh, your thoughts on West Virginia's defense and, and what different challenges they're going to throw at you. Well, probably uh, their, their D-lines uh, will be and or has shown to be the most disruptive D-line uh, that we've seen. Um, you know, they're – 
from from the inside guys all the way to the the edge guys and their outside backers they they all have the ability to get off blocks um, they slant and angle they're physical um, they run sideline to sideline they, they do a very good job with their front four um, putting pressure on the quarterback and tackling the football um, so so that'll be a huge challenge for us is their front four and then just having Skyler on the sideline for Will uh, going up against teams like West Virginia and the different challenges that they throw at him, uh, how big is that for Will to have a guy like Skyler to kind of help him see the field from maybe a different angle and have that, that veteran help? Um, I think it helps him on game day, but it's probably more important and, and is, is helping him more on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with, with Skyler's ability to sit in the meeting room and having been there. And obviously we watched last year's game of mo each opponent and Skyler able to see, see you know, to, to point things out that he was able to see to help Will. And, and he's done a great job with that. Skyler's done a great job from a leadership standpoint. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Last one here, Derek. Coach, you mentioned West Virginia's front four. Is that kind of what they present, or do they still kind of give you more of an odd man look on their front? Oh no, they're they're a multiple. I mean, they they are they're going to force us to to quote block what I'd call an odd front, and they're going to have four, uh, four down and be in a normal over and under type of defense, um, and they're going to try not to give you. A, a real good feeling of when it's happening. Um, you know, there's a, a, using an example, there was one formation that we broke down and looked at them. And if there was 15 snaps, they played about 12 different defenses in those 15 snaps. Obviously that's the front end, the, uh, the, the D line as well, changing some of what they're doing in the back end. So um, they're going to be multiple and, and they're going to force you to communicate. I know that he missed the game and missed a chunk of another from injury, but I think something that's being glossed over is you're starting a redshirt freshman on the offensive line in Cooper BB. How would you assess his yeah. play, and how would you as, – is he meeting expectations, what you would expect out of uh, him? Oh, he, he's definitely meeting expectations, and, and I really do believe that the, the longer the year goes along, the more reps he gets, the more and more people will see what we see, and that's his ability to be an extremely good football player.